to key payroll data. And now I'm going to make my way to the company information, which offers basic company information to the user. You'll notice right now the basics is highlighted. This is the name and address and the bank account information for the company. And now as we continue on to the menus on the screen, the organizational levels are going to offer different call centers as it applies to this company. We can have different divisions, different branches, departments, or teams. The earning and deduction codes are going to show you all of the available earnings and deductions that are available for this company. And then as I make my way to the states, this is going to show me the states where this organization is doing business. And now I'm going to make my way into the employee menu. This is where you will add or update employee information into the software. As we look in the center of my screen, I'm going to be able to see a table full of employee information. And slightly to the right of this, I'm going to be able to do a quick preview of that employee's specified information. And to edit or drill down into an employee, we just need to simply double click on that employee's name. And looking at the screen, we're going to follow the menus on the left, such as the personal, the labor defaults, ACA. So the personal is a few different sections where we can update the employee's information, as well as input their hire status, where they currently are, when they were hired, if they're active. The labor defaults tab is going to allow us to apply specific jobs to employees. It will also bring in our union information and this employee's call center. Our ACA menu is going to allow us the ability to control and maintain that employee's ACA compliance. And as we view our pay menu, we're going to be able to monitor the employee's compensation information as well as their FLSA status. The federal, state, and local menus are going to allow us to monitor the employee's wages for tax statuses. A few other menus we have is the ability to add child support garnishments, direct deposits, employees can see any scheduled earnings or deductions that are going to come out of their account, and then also we have access to the employee portal. The employee portal is where we control what the employee has the ability to log on to their self-service portal and what they have access to see. We also have the ability to bring notes in. We can bring these notes in as reminders for payroll, or we can do general notes in the system. And auditing information is very important. Everything in our system is auditable. By simply clicking the Show Audit History, I'm going to be able to view the category, I'm going to be able to see the operation, the field, the old value, the new value, and who the user was who changed those fields. Now we'll navigate to the Check Calculator screen. This screen is used to create net to gross checks on the fly. Choose the employee that you would like to pay from the drop-down. Select our net to gross option. We can enter the amount that we would like the net check to come to. Next, we'll click on the calculate button. We also have the ability to choose to send to payroll. This is going to make sure this check is processed in our next payroll. Now that we've gone through our dashboard, our company, our employees, the check calculator, we're going to move on to payrolls, and we're actually going to process the payroll in the system. Once we're at our payroll grid view, we can go to the timeline and add a new calendar if we need to, or we can simply go into a calendar that we are processing. We're going to accomplish our payroll in four easy tasks. First, we're going to start with our batch, then we're going to move to our checks, We'll continue to totals, and finally we'll be at our fourth step, which is finishing the payroll. But as I go into this batch information, I'm going to be able to define specific parameters for this payroll. And now as we look at this screen, I have specific options I can do. So maybe I want to pay hourly employees or salary employees. I can pay all here. I can also bring in certain templates that may be in the system such as commissions or maybe a reimbursement check. And in the event you have a specific check template, you can select that information as well. 
So my next step is to go in and create my checks. This is actually creating my check entry area. Now as we look at this grid, there are specific things that we can know. One, this grid is customizable. We can take this grid and move these items from left to right. We can also populate these columns however we need based on the view that we want to see. In addition, we also have the ability to reconfigure the grid completely. We can take these items and move them left or right or up and down. Once we apply this, the grid will be reconfigured and it will save those changes. And now as I enter my grid, I can use my keyboard and my arrow key to quickly add those hours that I need to populate for this payroll. Just by entering the information and clicking enter, it's going to instantly take me to the next line item. And my summary detail is going to allow me to enter payroll information in a lot more detail for every person in this batch. As my information is populated, I can scroll through and see all of my employees, but I also can go in and de view detailed information. In the event, I can just populate my arrow down, and now if I need to come in and add specific items, I can simply type those items here. I can add check lines, and I also can remove check lines. I also have the ability to come in and identify specific agency, organizational levels, jobs, UI rates, piecework, or workers comp information. In the event I need to override these items, I have the ability to do that here. And now if I want to view information for an employee in great detail, I can simply hit my drop down and now I'm going to be able to review specific check information for every single employee. This is going to give me that detailed entry. I can even review the check. In the event I need to override federal, state, or local information, I can do so here. But I also have the ability to tab through from one employee to the next. And if I need to customize items for this one check, I can go to my check lines and I can update that rate. Maybe if there's state or UI information I'm overriding, if there's a specific work address or agency. Another option we have, as opposed to typing in the hours, is we can import a time clock file. We can simply go to our computer, choose that file, upload that file, and import into the system. And now that my information is in the system, I'm going to pre-process this payroll. To pre-process payroll, we're going to go to our total screen, and then we're going to click on the Calculate button. And the reason we pre-process is so we can see the payroll information before the payroll is completed. To my left, we're going to see all of the earning and deduction codes. And to the right, we're going to see all of the tax information that may need our review. And once we've reviewed our data, now we can go to the finish line and click finish. And now that I'm at my finish line, I can simply click the process payroll button. This is going to submit my payroll. From here, I can print all of my reports, send items to the task queue. Next, we're going to go to our reports. To get to the reporting, we're going to click on the reports tab on the left menu. From this screen, we're going to have three options, our defined reports, our published reports, and our ad hoc reports. Defined reports are those reports that can be ran on demand for this company. To do so, we're going to select the report and then click on the Configure button. We can select all of the necessary parameters from each of these tabs on how we're going to generate this report. And when complete, now we're going to click on Run this report. And now the Publish Reports section is going to show me the reports that were generated for payroll or for tax purposes. So from this screen, I can select the report that I would like to preview, and now I'm going to preview this report. And now the ad hoc report writing tool is a custom feature that allows us to bring in specific information from the software. By clicking our ad hoc reports menu, I can go to any one of these reports in this section that I want to generate, and now I can run this report. And now in the event that I would like to change this report or modify it, 
I can simply go and edit my fields or add additional columns into the report that I need. When we have the information configured the way that we would like, we can simply come in and run this report, which is going to send the information to our task queue. 